Well, my name is Phil Proctor, and... Uh, Hiya, friends. Well, sports boat, well, sports boat motors. Hello, Mr. Danger, you stupid fool. <laughs> oh, Nick, you're such a tool. <laughs> Good morning, fellow kids. This is Principal Poop, etc., etc. Hi, this is Phil Proctor, and if you came here from Planet Proctor, you can take off your helmet now. <laughs> Breathe some really... <sighs> wow. <laughs> Rarefied air. <coughs> Wait a minute. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> This stuff is really harsh. I smoke too soon. <laughs> Suit up! <laughs> Quick! Your tea, sir? Oh, yes. Thank you. You believe me, don't you? Of course. Ambrose, you're never going to see the secrets again, and someday you'll teach all of Somersetshire to live by his motto. But I will. You'll see. Finest squire this county ever knew. The fear of all the foxes, but a gentle master too. And everyone will love me and applaud my great career till the people all demand that I be made a peer. That you be made a peer, oh, Thomas! You're not convinced, I can tell. Tell me more. What do you be, Wigger Tory? Which is the squire? None. Uh, but what are your views on the domestic economy, on our relations with the French? Well... Sir Thomas, then they'll call me the good, the just, the bold. With robes all draped in ermine and a coronet of gold. The king will seek my counsel with you at my right hand. And the two of us together, we will rule all of England. Of course I see your logic. We're just the St. James sort. No matter what is needed, we'll give it to the court. Let Georgie seek your counsel. I find that quite a City ways and we're part of the courtly set. I'll be just as kind to a countess as I am to a poor baronet. We'll, we'll see, see that the colonies the flourish and, and the empires made strong, strong and stout. Except perhaps for America, which is hardly worth bothering about. But what if I should be so noble that England should want me for king? And thousands and thousands of subjects join under my window to sing. God save Thank you again, thank you. Now, there is just one question, a trifling little question, really, which must be answered now, once and for all. And that is, will you have me abdicate? No! No! Or will you let me move my throne to Somersetshire? Which shall it be, my people? Which shall it be? To Somersetshire! To Somersetshire! Thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my simple foundling's heart. For I'm not made for London, for Paris or for Rome. So if I must be the monarch, I would rather be at home.
Testing, hello. Testing, one, two, three, four. Hello, you stupid fools. Do you hear me? Yes, okay. All right. Are you rolling? I'm rolling. Oh, I'm rocking. Okay. I'm rocky. You are, I'm rocky. You're rolling. <laughs> hello, you stupid fools. You are at the Firezine website. I've caught you like a bug. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I've caught a virus. I'm fading, fading. What a world. What a world. These feelings are like... Uh... Feelings of love. I saw a man spill some coffee on his hand in a hamburger store. And nobody had any time to even realize that it was just a simple, clumsy human thing that had happened. And about all that they could do was be embarrassed about it. And I found myself laughing uncontrollably about it. And then when I thought about it again, it made me cry. But if I went around crying all the time, I don't think I'd be very good company. So I laugh instead and make people laugh. It's like the confusion of love, you know. Does love hurt or is it something that makes you feel happy? And I guess it's somewhere right in between, just kind of on a tightrope. Well, this is Ray Hamburger of the Firesign Theater. You know, if you're tired of being blue or any other color for that matter, then you should definitely buy the new Firesign Theater record Give me immortality or give me death on Rhino. It's bound to cheer you up and bring new color to your palate. And it's uh, even got music on it. You can hum along. That's give me immortality or give me death. Get it before it gets you. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. It's hard to tell what time it is when you're sitting in front of an electronic screen that's probably hurting you and preventing you from having children in future generations. Hi, I hope you are. 
This is Fred Flam of TV or Not TV. <laughs> and what do we call this? The Internet. Because your innermost thoughts are revealed here. <laughs> That's why we call it interactive. So <clears throat> be careful what you think or do because Big Brother is watching you, but I'm not. So go on. Enjoy yourself. It's Firezine Land. It is my opinion that views expressed, editorial or otherwise, should be carefully eliminated. And so, I feel forced to suggest that opinions expressed on this station should in no way represent the opinions of our management or various members of the staff or our families and few friends. Nor should these views express the opinions of you, the audience, and your staff, unless, of course, you are willing to freely assume the responsibilities that your opinions will not influence anyone else or their family or friends or staff. Anyway, that's what it says here, and I'm only reading it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <clears throat> Dear friends, since the surrogate population has obviously decided to stick it out with President Dick, this country now, more than ever, is going to need a masked man behind the scenes. Capone! Thank you. We have not lost. We have merely been lost in the shuffle. And we all know who's dealing. Dicky! <coughs> sure, it hurt us when the amoebas and the schizophrenics split their vote and the wholesale defection of the lemmings made it look like a real cliffhanger. But the underground black and brown vote, I'm speaking here of the ants, the moles, and the chiggers, supported us with a groundswell of popular and overwhelming, or should I say underwhelming, dedication. And what is a horse leech? I don't know, but they voted for us too. What is a horse leech? Yes, thank you, I may have lost control, but I haven't lost my mind. I'm staying behind this mask. And in the words of my colleague and buddy, Sir Russell Poop, I'll be watching, waiting, sniffing in corridors, seeking to find out which one of us has the cold nose. <clears throat> I leave you then. Goodbye. Thank you. With this promise. Premise. Premise. It's Papoon now more than never. I'm not insane. Not insane! Please stay tuned. Thank you. Not insane! Hello, blues fans. This is Ray Hamburger. And you know, my favorite blues lyric goes a little something like this. Woke up this morning with the fire sign on my mind. Their new CD on Rhino Records will be out in September, and I'll go down to my local record store and see if one I can find. <laughs> I just love that song. Uh, I remember hearing it first when I was in university, Solid State U. So anyway, go out and get the new Firesign Theater album on Rhino Records. You won't be blue. Good evening, residents of Siberia. We know it's no bed of roses for you out there, but tonight we have news for you from America. In a few seconds, Carl Gromelski will attempt to shoot himself to the moon from a cannon. Unfortunately, there's a brick wall in the way. Oh. In the beginning, there was the hamburger. Then, all of a sudden, somebody forgot what the hamburger was all about. 
and the classic good time burger was buried in a pile of chili, pickle, mushrooms, sprouts, English muffin, avocado, bacon, onion rings, jalapeno, peppers, rock, eggs, lamb chops, oranges, sauerkraut, and ugh, anchovies. La Choy Kung Food Theater. Well, brother, there is just one more bowl of La Choy Chow Mein. Mm. <laughs> brother, wait! Why don't we split it? Lemon, it's a lemon. This car's a lemon and I'll never get home. Hello, dumb buddy. You're driving along just reading the mail, working a load of post holes and sailboat fuel from Magic City to Mickey Mouse Town when you spot this fancy seat cover in the show-off lane. Ce siège est il prix, mademoiselle? That's the best line I've heard all night. What does it mean? Is this seat taken? Of course not, silly. It's still there. Ah, merci. I'm Louis Pasteur, the papa of pasteurization. Oh, another married man. So why the long face, Louis? Oh, it's this beer. Miller Genuine Draft. Moxie Bloom presents Steve Trouble, Tire Detective. I am Sheikh Abdullah. Some infidels just stole the tires off my Mercedes. Okay, uh, what are you doing? With that bird. If any no steel belted radial tire <laughs> becomes unserviceable during the first 20,000 crackers. Excuse me, but I must have a closer look at that trophy. Exquisite. The workmanship is marvelous. Smurfs, you can come out now. The tree cutters are gone. Oh, King Gerard, you arrived just in time. I would have been here sooner, but it took me a while to figure out what your note meant, Brainy. Okay, Michael, let her fly. Yeah! I'm afraid it's just another Cooper blooper. Yoo-hoo, boys! Yoo-hoo! Uh, that sport goofy could cause us some real trouble. Next, the stockholders gala party. Sir. Now, in order to save money, uh, sir. everybody will bring one deviled egg. Sir. Yes, Wilson. Wilson, one share. You yes. know, AT&T. Wilson, we voted on keeping AT&T. But I thought the stockholders might like to know that AT&T has lowered its rates 20.4% since 1984. Thank you. Now, if you ask your moms to each make a dozen chocolate chip cookies... Who else in one share? This better not be about AT&T. I move we make peanut butter cookies instead of chocolate chip. For crying out loud. We'll be right back after a few words from our sponsor. You may not know this, but there are two sides to your brain. The left side concerns itself with sensible things. Extra, extra, hear all about it. Starting now, there's something extra for you at Boys and Foods Company stores. Well, we have evidence, uh, you have a copy in front of you, that your company awards a prize to the store that sells the most pepperoni pizzas. A six-foot bronze <laughs> pepperoni pizza in your likeness, and you have no knowledge of it. No. Roll in Exhibit A, please. During the next 18 seconds, if you're very quiet and listen very carefully, you'll be able to hear some of the more subtle sounds of the new James Bond movie, The Living Daylights. San Juan Bank, can I help you? Yeah, I need a loan for a... <laughs> An auto loan? Uh-huh. Something with... But with good... So I feel safe. Uh -huh. And something with a terrific... So I won't go crazy sitting in my car during a... What are you in for, pal? Assault and battery. Yeah, who'd you beat up? A drive through clown speaker. You beat up one of them? drive through clowns, yeah. I couldn't take it anymore. Long way, huh? When it was finally my turn, the clown said, Please wait. Then what? I ripped his little head off. Okay, honey, Irish quiz time. Is it St. Patrick's Day again? <laughs> Sorry, Sally, we're out of time. We've got leeks and figs and concord grapes, crab apples, manzanos, peaches, pears and citrus fruits, muscats and guanos, berries, cherries, chilies, lettuce, cabbage and wax beans, tomatoes, eggplant, artichokes, dandelion greens. Of course, you're free to shop pavilions at your own pace. Pavilions and Pavilions Place. Quality and selection without paying the price. I seem to be missing a jar of Manaloa macadamia nuts. Oh, sir, I found it. Here it is. Is gift wrapped and addressed to your mother. Mm. I'll just run this over to the post office before you change your mind. Not so fast, Chisler. I could have sworn I heard. Is that money in your newspaper? Well, yes, there's ten thousand dollars in my press telegram. Ten thousand dollars? You mean I could win ten thousand dollars in cash? Uh -huh. What could one man do with all of that money? Buy the Playboy Mansion and fill it with beautiful girls. <laughs> By the Yankees and fire its manager. Well, the frenzy over Wheel of Fortune Month continues. I'm on Broadway, where 200 dancers are on stage rehearsing a special tribute to Wheel of Fortune. Hold it! They're rolling in a gigantic paper mache banner, and they say there's no good taste left. Ay, mira. Que mariosa. Every new generation thinks that they invented sex. <laughs> That's ridiculous, we all agree, but actually the truth is 
The preponderance of proof is sex was invented in 1893. My cousin Consuela invented it in 1893. And oh, what a lovely invention it has turned out to be. It was a beautiful Sunday in Malaga. I was there, luckily. When Cousin Consuela invented it in 1893, her mother had gone to Granada. Mine was out for the day. When Cousin Consuela thought of it, that wonderful Sunday in May, she promised that it would be fun to do. I shouldn't worry at all. This brilliant idea was hers alone. My input was really quite small. She was 16. I was younger, but oh, so anxious to learn. Her long wavy hair was a wonder. For it, I often still yearn. Each chance that we got, we researched it. For fully six months or more I think I can say quite truthfully It was perfected by 94 By late 95 the secret was out No longer just hers and mine And by 96 it had covered all Spain And the whole world by 99 In Paris and Rome they were doing it from Brazil to the Vale of Kashmir. And to think that my cousin invented it. 93 was a red letter year. Galileo invented the wheel. What a deal. Einstein the electric light. Marconi invented something or other. But my cousin was equally bright. Bell discovered the telephone. Lindbergh put men in the air. All these inventions were interesting, but nothing to compare with my cousin Consuela's conception. For it, let's give a cheer. Ole! For no other invention could possibly interest me for all of these years. Interest me for all of these years. Hi, friends. Ross Sportsport here to say give me immortality or give me death. And that's the name of the new Firesign Theater album on Rhino Records. So get it before it gets you. Hi, this is Frank Acme, and welcome to the wonderful world of Firezine, sponsored by the fantastic Firesign Theater. I eat them every day. Hey, enjoy yourself. This is the first steam-operated website created by my great-uncle. He was really a great guy, so my great-great-uncle, Jonas Acme, the inventor of the steam-operated computer. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Milk Gomboski with more shortcuts to big bucks. Do you realize how much money is sitting in your mailbox every day, every week, every month? Hundreds and hundreds of dollars that you probably just throw away because you don't recycle stamps. <laughs> with my simple technique, turn that trash mail into cash mail by rinsing, regluing, and reusing canceled stamps. Hate those long lines in the post office? I guarantee you'll never be seen in a post office again except for your picture on the wall. That's right. It's illegal. But that's why it's so easy. And if you're caught, you'll spend the rest of the recession resting and watching TV, clothed, housed, and protected by the government. You'll even be fed. That's why it's called The Fed. <laughs> so send for the Milcom Bosky Stamp Recycler. Maybe you can't lick City Hall, but you can stick it to him again and again. This is Milcom Bosky with more shortcuts to big bucks. 
Are you asking yourself, how can I continue to support my impossible lifestyle if I'm flushed out of my job? Well, don't worry about losing that swimming pool. Just fill it with catfish and start getting profits out of that pond. Catfish are scavengers and bottom feeders so you can recycle your garbage in the pool and swim like a king while those suckers suck it up below you. And what a bonus when your guests dive in and come face to face with 30 pounds of fearsome fin. There's also that bucket in your bathroom to make bucks in. That's right. You can grow jumbo shrimp in the toilet. Just keep the lid open and the lights on and watch the profits grow. You can even earn while you're out driving around looking for a job. Raise anchovies in your automobile's radiator. After 50 miles, those guys are hot to flop. Don't hold those anchovies. Just drain them on a pizza or a Caesar salad. This is Milk Combosky. You know, you don't have to pull any dirty tricks to be filthy rich like me. All you need to do is remember Milcom's dictums. Dictum number one, you don't need a rainbow to find a pot of gold. <laughs> That's right. It's already on the ground, ripe for the picking. I'm talking lost change. Believe me, no dirty copper is going to stop you from stooping and scooping and shooting the Lincoln into your pocket. And think of the exercise. Dictum number two, let your feet do the banking. See that piece of discarded gum on the pavement ahead? Well, step on it. You've just turned yourself into a money magnet. Your penny loafers will be picking up dimes and quarters, and you'll be on Easy Street. And you know those little cups on the counter filled with copper that say, need a penny? Take one. Hell, take them all. They'll fill them up again. Why? Because of Milcom's dictum number three, people hate change. This is Milcom Bosky with more Shortcuts to Big Bucks. This is Malcolm Bosky with more shortcuts to big bucks. Today, the first in my 13-step program to build a solid financial future. To start, buy my book. It's called How to Sell a Book to Anybody. That takes care of my financial future. Now, how about yours? Buy my newsletter, Bosky's Bottom Line. Here's what you get. Bosky's Stock Market BS. That's right, bullseye stocks. Every month I'll point out the 10 stocks that I hit on my personal dartboard. Don't laugh, it really works. Then there's Milcom's Dumpster, where you can pick up bundles of junk bonds dumped by last year's Wall Street Wonderkins. They're so cheap, you can insulate your attic with them and stay warm for the next 50 years while you wait for that junk to appreciate. And the last page is my favorite. It's all Garfield cartoons on one side, while the back is densely packed with graphs and charts in Japanese, German, and gobbledygook so that people will think you're taking your financial future seriously. And you are, because you're listening to Milcom Bosky with Shortcuts to Big Bucks. Hi, this is Milcom Bosky with more Shortcuts to Big Bucks. Buy my set of Subliminal Success Seminar cassettes. Sure, it sounds like six hours of elevator music, but it's going to take you to the top. Because on a simultaneous track, I have recorded a series of my most powerful success secrets at a frequency so high that only your dog can hear what I'm really saying. Get it? After only one listening, your golden retriever is going to do just that. Dig up the gold. Think about it. Your hound could go back into the pound, the English pound, and make a killing. Your poodle will make a boodle for you Monday through Sunday. What's a weekend to a dog? If you don't have a pet, just order my subliminal workbook. Sure, people will laugh at you because it looks like you're reading a Batman comic, but the Joker's on them because hidden in every picture is a bosky bombshell that will start working before you know it. And you're going to have to start working because your neighbor's pit bull just listened to my tapes and foreclosed on your mortgage. This is Milk Bosky with more shortcuts to big bucks. Hi, this is Milk Bosky with more shortcuts to big bucks. Everybody's concerned with the astronomical cost of owning their own house. At my seminars, people walk up to me and say, Milcom, help me. My mortgage payments are so high that you might as well say the bank owns my house. Well, they do. So why not return the favor, rent your house out, and move into your bank? It's a modern, nicely furnished, air-conditioned environment, and there's plenty to do in a bank. How many times have you spent all day standing in line? At night, move into the vault. And if the guard ever comes around and asks what the hell you're doing, in there, just tell him you're keeping an eye on your money, which is more than he's doing. He's sitting on his keystone watching the parking lot on TV, which, by the way, is a lot more interesting than what's on the networks. So, move into your bank. It's the ultimate high-security condo, a great address, quiet on the weekends, and barring a world depression or the president's son getting on its board of directors, it'll be around as long as your mortgage. This is Milcom Bosky with more shortcuts to big bucks. 
And today, another way to make hay while those around you are fertilizing the poor farm, seminars. Buy my seminar in a suitcase kit, and I'll give you everything you need to make a fortune off of mooks like yourself who think that a weekend at the Bunker Hilton listening to a BS artist who got it all out of a suitcase is going to change their life. Choose any one of my three scintillating seminars guaranteed to dazzle and daze the dummies. Seminar number one, foreclosure your fortunes, lucking out on the locked out luckless. Seminar number two, estate planning after death, the bottom line for flatliners. And seminar number three, my personal favorite, selling more seminars in a suitcase. Ha <laughs> ha! Remember, seminars are the low self-esteem engine that's going to run the 90s right out of this century. Hey, you just went for it. Why not sell it to somebody else? That's pyramid power. Sign up today. This is Milk Bosky with more shortcuts to big bucks. Hi, this is Milk Bosky with more shortcuts to big bucks, and today, start your own SNL, and that stands for Steal and Leave. All you need is an empty building with a fancy front and a big back door, because that's where the trucks pull up to take all the cash to the Cayman Islands. Now, you need a name that inspires confidence. My SNL is called Milk Bosky's Imperial Lincoln Federal Republic Washington Savings. Get it? Then tack up a plaque that says, On this corner since 9 a.m. this morning, and watch the mooks march in. On the inside, rent some desks and some sharp-looking cardboard cutout executives to sit behind them. For tellers, I prefer those blow-up Johns and Judys from the local love boutique. Just stick a dialogue balloon in their mouths that says, Next window, please. Then sit behind your desk, drinking coffee in a shiny suit, writing checks to yourself. Oh, don't forget to install an executive trapdoor under your chair. That way, when the bottom drops out, so can you. This is Mel Kambosky with more Shortcuts to Big Bucks. <laughs> I'm sure you've all heard of the guy who made a fortune offering galvanized coat hangers through the mail at a buck a piece. Well, I was that guy, and what was my secret? Those coat hangers were nails. That's right. The public got what I advertised. They got nailed, and I got rich. And so can you by observing a few simple tricks of the trade. Your ad doesn't have to be big or flashy, but it does have to contain the ten magic words. And the number one word is luck. Use it as often as you can, such as, This good luck lucky penny has brought good luck to unlucky losers all over the world for ten bucks you can luck out now. The other magic words are sex, money, health, secret, Hitler, power, guaranteed, and special edition. Use them in almost any order or combination, but use them all. Like this special secret limited collector's edition of Hitler's World War II pyramid power lucky ankle chains are guaranteed to bring you sex, money, health, and power. Each one is numbered and signed by Hitler himself as channeled through me, Madam Cosmo. Get it? You can by sending a check for twelve ninety-five to me, Madam Cosmo. This is Milk and Bosky with more shortcuts to big bucks. Hi, I'm Milk Bosky with more shortcuts to big bucks. And today, I'm going to show you how to find the hidden treasure in that money pit you call your home. Everybody knows there's nothing like so-called home improvements to inflate the value of your private property and keep you from paying your fair share of taxes. But who wants to live on the street panhandling to pay for the renovations they're doing on your dump? Welcome to the world of Milk Bosky's Cosmetic Changes. Would an extra room at 100 k to the price of your pad? Okay. Wheel your heap into the street. Move the carpets and crap you got stored in your attic into the empty garage and presto, changeo, your one-bedroom bachelor crash pad is now a two-bedroom bungalow. Then paint the house white and the lawn green, get the appraiser out there and watch her eyes go all zeros. Sell it for Boku beans to some shake on the take and move out. Hey, the world is your oyster. Pick out the pearl and let the other guy eat it raw. I'm Milk Bosky with more shortcuts to big bucks. Hi, this is Milk Bosky, the shortcuts to big bucks guy. With another of my ten tips on how to ride out the recession. Tip number three. Rent yourself. <laughs> you can save your skin simply by selling it. And I'm not talking about hooking. I'm talking about booking yourself as a human billboard. You see, in the old days when times were tough, folks made the bread they needed for a sandwich by wearing a sandwich board over their shoulders and parading around handing out flyers. But today, if you want to attract the public's attention, you gotta take a flyer and do something daring. So get out that magic marker, take off your clothes, and start scribbling. If if you're a foxy lady, paint an ad for the local gym on your tummy. If you're bald, pen a spot for a barber shop. And if you got a nice butt, tell the people where to get the best rump roast in town. You're only limited by your imagination, your figure, and the climate. Ha <laughs> ha! This is Milk and Bosky. Hi, this is Milk and Bosky, the shortcuts to big bucks guy, with another tip on how to ride out the recession. 
Have a garage sale. But, Milcom, you say, we've already sold everything we own to make ends meet, even our car. Well, that's my point. Since you no longer need your garage, sell it. You see, the Japanese bought up all the land they could get, and they still have a yen for more. And you can put some of that yen in your Yankee pockets by just tearing down that useless garage and selling the lot to Tokyo Inc. That's right. They're used to putting skyscrapers in small spots, and in minutes, they'll erect a fabulous high-rise hotel right next door to your humble home. Then, before the tourist buses start pulling up, convert your house into a snack bar, disco, souvenir joint, and miniature theme park. And if your kids are still living with you because you can't afford to send them to college, start your own escort service. This is Milcom Bosky reminding you that in a double-dip recession, it may look like a rocky road, but you can lick it. Today, go to hell! Ha <laughs> ha! That's right! Many of you made it through the holidays playing Santa Claus, but that jolly red suit doesn't have to be moth meat till next Xmas. With a few simple alterations, that outfit will keep you out of the red no matter how black your outlook may seem. Just rip off all that white fur, pin a piece of red rope to the back of your pants, tape a pair of New Year's party horns to your head, and get ready to have a devil of a time. Take that sign that says Santa's Village and set it up on a vacant lot. Move the letters around so it reads Satan's Village. Then light a nice big bonfire, play some rock and roll backwards on a ghetto blaster, and watch the suckers roll in. Ha <laughs> ha! Sweet dreams! I'm Mil Kambosky. Today, go flock yourself. Ha <laughs> ha That's right. Everybody gets depressed during the holiday season. But it's even worse when the economy's bummed out, too. And that's why I told you to go into the local Christmas tree lot and get flocked in the color of your choice. Then, before you can say Kris Kringle, some bargain-crazed consumer with a big heart and a big family invited you home for the holidays. You got fed, eggnogged, and then bowled and lit as they decorated you with ornaments and draped you with colored lights. What a turn on! But now Christmas is over, and what are you gonna do? Ha <laughs> ha! It's simple! Walk on down the street and hire yourself out as a lawn statue! So what if it's cold? It's easier to hold a pose if you're frozen stiff. And once the lights go out, you can go get really stiff at the local bar with a hot cash in your pockets. Ha <laughs> ha! This is Milk Combustion. Hey, hi y'all. This is uh, Phil Proctor of the Firesign Theater. Hey, you know, it's less than 500 days to the end of the world as we know it. Yes, I'm talking year 2000. So you've only got that much time to go out and buy the new Firesign Theater album, Give Me Immortality or Give Me Death. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hi, this is Bill Gates. I'd advise you to enjoy this site, the Firesign site, as much as you can because it's going to be outmoded very soon. I'm making a deal with Disney, and we're going to take it over and replace it with uh, something else. Uh, welcome to Billville. Bye. Saturday. 
day. 2,000 watt woofers all over the place. Tinker and the bunny with a jamming on the cars. First time in my life I'm a seeing stars. I said, yo, ma'am, why do you run? They said that there's a story where the life is tired at. And they say the level boys in the cars that go, boom, I'm a gotta get a car. I need speaker room. I got the tools. I don't know the rules. I'm a graduate of rapping music schools. I don't know the bit. I shoot them deaf. When I rap it to the right and then I rap it to the left. So I turn up the volume and I blow a fuse. Oh, video you, Nilly, what's the matter for you? I do not do it. It's no bad news. Cause I got a spare fuse in my rapping shoes. Rap it this. Is this working? Am I working? <laughs> oh, <coughs> hi! This is Frank Funk of Funk and Mundane, the oldest living theatrical couple in America. Excuse me. <coughs> Unfortunately, Margot is not able to be here with me tonight because I forgot to ask her to come. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, where, where the hell are we? Uh, anyway, we're, we're nowhere at all, which asks the question, how can you be? in nowhere at all when you haven't been anywhere anyway, which is the story of my career. <laughs> anyway, uh, whatever you're doing, uh, at least you're doing something, unlike me. Is that all right? Yeah, all right. Turn off the goddamn thing. Hi, I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. I just threw away $200 worth of perfectly good batteries because the battery in my battery tester had gone bad. And now I've got a drawer full of useless radios, calculators, watches, and flashlights that mock me. I can't get in my car because it's got a dead battery-operated lock, but that doesn't matter because the eye on the battery-operated garage door opener isn't winking anymore. I call for help, but my remote answer phone won't recharge. And the last message I got was from my girlfriend saying she couldn't get through. I'm sitting here in the dark clapping. But I guess the batteries on the sound-operated lights have given up the ghost. And to tell the truth, I'm not even sure I'm getting anything down at all on this portable tape recorder. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Hello, I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. I went to the supermarket yesterday to get a jar of peanut butter. It took me an hour to find the right aisle. It wasn't in pet bribes, starch blockers, or compressed desserts. I finally found it in the breakfast boutique next to Auto Alley. The jar was labeled old-fashioned, chunky-esque style peanut butter, lead and arsenic free. I like that, but what's dipropyl-10-laurel-mega-stultimate? Is that the stuff that takes 
takes hair off your chest or puts it on your head. And what exactly do they mean by old-fashioned? Does that imply it was made in somebody's tub without the advantage of the sterile process? By now, I was so hungry, I wolfed down two bags of simulated peanut-colored styro chips and washed the whole thing down with a quart box of Captain Quench multicolored malt-flavored electrolyte drink. I must have gone into some kind of snack shock because the next thing I remember is being wheeled out to my car in a shopping basket. This is Hal Stark. Hello, I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. When I was a kid, it was easy to understand what wasn't good for me, like running with a pointed stick and picking scabs. But later in my teens, someone told my parents to tell me it was bad to read certain comic books and eat maraschino cherries. Why? Because of the Red Scare, number one, and Red Dye, number two. Commies killed the comics, and cancer killed the Shirley Temple. Not the Shirley Temple, but the drink. Then they told me other things were bad, like my favorite cereals, even bacon and eggs, deep-fried foods, grilled foods, even the all-American barbecue. Then, all red meat. Cigarettes, of course, and coffee. And today they tell me anything I do can be bad for me if I do too much of it. And if I like doing too much of anything, I'm an addict. Well, I don't do anything I like anymore, except complain. I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Hello, I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Every year on my birthday, I sit in front of the TV, slip in the tape of a roaring fire, settle down into my massage chair set to lower lumbar, and pour five fingers of fine Greek brandy from the deluxe lead crystal decanter set that my bank gave me when I closed my account and paid that enormous penalty. That was all before a board of experts got back from their year-long conference in Hawaii to announce that liquids stored in crystal decanters like this one can leach out lethal levels of lead, an element that we all know has the power to render even Superman blind. So today I'm bidding a fond farewell to the only prize I've ever won, sipping the last from this gorgeous decanter before I let it drift lazily to the floor. Hmm. Not much hang time. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Hello, I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. And today I'm down in the basement sorting out my life for the recycler. I'm surrounded by stacks of newspapers with headlines going back to Nixon resigns and plastic bags stuffed with other plastic bags filled with plastic bottles. In one corner, a hill of dead dog cat food tins, and in the other, a mountain of crushed Bear Whiz beer cans. The day bed is covered with old platform heel boots, exhausted earth shoes, Big Ben extra-large corduroy bell bottoms, tie-dyed tank tops, and my collection of Nehru jackets. My pool table is a high-tech cemetery of dead blenders, pooped popcorn poppers, blown out blow dryers, fried hi-fis, tired TVs, and wasted word processors. You know, when the recycler comes around, I'm just going to turn myself in, too. Maybe somebody else can take what's left of my life and stuff a couch with it. I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Hello, I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Last week, I went down to Ted's typewriter tune-up to give my 1932 Underwood its annual physical, only to discover that Ted's had been replaced by the Humpty Dumpty Software House. When I came to, I was home unpacking $5,000 worth of personal computer and cracking the back of a three-pound manual titled, Welcome to the Window on the Wonderful World of the McMickey Micro Mini Mac. Goodbye to a garage full of receipts and an attic's worth of paper bags, napkins, and shirt cardboards covered with notes. With the help of my McMickey, I was transferring it all onto floppy disks. I was halfway through when a flock of Canadian geese, thrown off course by a burst of military microwaves, ran into some high power lines and shorted out the whole state. McMickey went down with them and wiped out my life from 1939 to 1957. Sure, I had a backup disc, but while the lights were out, my dog mistook it for a treat and ate it. And so did I. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Hello, I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. I just read a report in the paper that left-handed people, like me, have a shorter life expectancy. <laughs> so what? None of life's pleasures are left. I can't sip wine from fine crystal because of the sulfites and lead. I can't smoke or sit before a roaring fire because that smoke is carcinogenic, too. I haven't got time to list the foods I can't eat, but the stuff that remains only tastes good with salt, and that's on the list. So whatever life I've got left, I'm going to live right as a right-handed guy. I rehung all my doors so they open on the right, stopped using my left brain, I've cut leftovers out of my diet, and I've given up 
all left-wing causes. The newspaper claims that left-handedness is correlated with low intelligence and low income. But my financial problems didn't begin until I switched hands. I'm going to court next week on 14 counts of forgery. Must have been those checks I tried to sign with my right hand. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Hello, I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. I'm spending more and more time in my car these days. Not going anywhere, just in my car, making toast in a traffic jam. That's right, I've put a dashboard mini kitchen in my glove compartment that plugs into my cigarette lighter. Of course, that means I can't smoke while I eat, but I don't have time to eat anyway. I'm too busy receiving wrong numbers on my mobile phone and junk mail on my fax. Maybe it was a mistake installing an auto office in the passenger seat. But it does have a microwave coffee maker, a filing cabinet, a solar-powered pencil sharpener, although I don't get the point on a cloudy day, and a fireproof safe with a combination locked safely inside. And the whole thing comes in smog gray, high-impact plastic. I'm glad it's high-impact, because with all the filing, faxing, and phoning, I'm constantly making business contacts at 35 miles an hour. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Uh -oh. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Yesterday, my computer started eating itself, so I called the manufacturer for help. I'm used to having real people assist me when I have a problem, but instead I got a recording that told me to press 1 if I wanted new product information, press 2 if I wanted to open a dealership, press 3 if I wanted to talk to other satisfied customers, and press 4 if I had a complaint. I pressed 4 and got the same voice telling me to press 1 if the problem I was experiencing was due to my own ignorance, press 2 if the problem was the result of alien interference, press 3 if this was a crank call, and press 4 if I was completely exasperated by listening to these pre-recorded useless and totally moronic questions. I pressed 4 and much to my relief heard the sound of an actual phone ringing and after 60 or 70 rings I reached what sounded like a real person who said, thank you for calling, please hold. I'm still holding. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. <laughs> but I've got summer sinuses. It happens to me every year. <laughs> For a long time, I didn't know whether it was the pollution, the pets, or the pollen. I hardly ever left my air-conditioned office, sitting there blowing my nose and trying to read through puffy eyes the results of my last allergy test. I finally discovered I was allergic to the very tissues into which I was emptying my red and runny nose. <laughs> I went back to using old-fashioned handkerchiefs, but my postmodern drip was running far ahead of my hanky supply, so one desperate afternoon I cut up the cotton curtains in my bedroom into neat little nasal-sized squares, then my sheets, pillowcases, and finally my pajamas. So here I lie, naked on a bare mattress with the sodium vapor streetlight casting a ghastly orange pallor through my curtainless windows. I have to wind this up now because I need to make better use of this script I'm reading. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Yesterday at my local library, I asked the lady behind the desk to direct me to the history section. She said she preferred to call it herstory, emphasizing the experience of women. I thought she was kidding until she opened up the new Webster's College Dictionary, and there it was. Herstory, along with woman spelled M-Y-N to keep the men out. I discovered that waiter had become waitron. Can you imagine calling out, check please, waitron? I told her it all seemed artificial to me, and the librarian complimented me on the political correctness of saying artificial instead of the sexist term man-made. As I leafed through the dictionary, I noticed that the editors had come up with no alternatives for manhandle, manhole, manhunt, and manslaughter. Wouldn't it be more politically correct to read about the waitron wanted for person slaughter who disappeared down a person hole to avoid the person hunt in progress? This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Hello, I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century, and I'm hooked on junk junk mail. It all started when Ed McMahon sent me a letter announcing through a window in the envelope that I had already won ten million dollars. But something inside me, maybe it was my sanity, kept me from buying the necessary subscriptions to Wet Women Athletes and Closet Design Monthly. 
I had hardly recuperated from that rags to riches and back to rags again roller coaster ride when I received an envelope with a printed, handwritten scrawl on the outside saying, Don't open this unless you've decided to open this. Inside was a check for one million dollars from astrologer Dame Edith Root Mandrake, predicting that someone would honor this check if I walked in wearing one of her royal presidential power pendants. I ran the idea through the shredder, miraculously transforming the letter into repacking material, and sent that pitiful pendant back to Dame Edith. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Well, I finally kicked my addiction to junk those packages of junk mail my postman drops off every morning. But I'm still heavily involved in the mail liberation movement. That's why I've just returned from an intensive weekend seminar on catalog codependency. We sit in a circle and read our favorite selections out loud to the beat of a drum in order to overcome our shame of being addicted to lots of totally useless objects. Things like weather predicting ducks, patriotic lawn snakes, police prayer plaques, three-dimensional horse hats, updated gossip benches, whiskey-scented scratch-and-sniff couch pillows, plug-in praying hand surge protectors, and cheddar-scented water-repellent door stoppers. No, 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 enough. I don't need any of this stuff. I'm going to throw this catalog. Wait a minute. It says here that if I don't order something, they'll take me off the mailing list. Hmm. Maybe I could use this solar-powered toilet paper warmer. Yeah. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century, and you can call me at 1-515-555-4455. That is, if you call me before the first of next month, then you'll have to dial 1-888-555-4455. You see, with all the fax machines and cellular phones, they've had to add new area codes. Of course, you can write me at my zip code 99303, oh, that is, until the end of this year. Then it'll be changed to 99303-278. Eight. <laughs> They've added a busy zip because, guess what? Too many people. I'm already having trouble remembering the secret number for my ATM card, my home security system, and my punch-in car locks. And if I ever forget them, I'll be out on the street without a dime. Gee, maybe that's why there are so many homeless. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century, saying 10-4, or should I say 10-4-3877? Oh, no, that starts next week. Hi, I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. When I walked down to my mailbox this morning, my eyes started to water and I began to sneeze uncontrollably, a sure sign that another perfume-drenched copy of Vanity Magazine had arrived. The smell of the month this week is Harlot, the latest New World odor promoted by some over-the-hill starlet known only for the stinkers she released in Hollywood. I can't visit my favorite department store anymore because models are lurking everywhere, waiting to spring out and spray me with snob or funk or gay outing. And as they proceed down the aisles, atomizing the other customers, I lie wheezing on the floor, smelling like a multicultural whorehouse. I'd rather be sprayed by a cat in heat. Yesterday, even the sanctity of my office was violated when I received a personal fax from Liz Taylor containing a scratch-and-sniff sample of lust. I'm still scratching and sniffing. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. <laughs> Hello, I'm Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. I've read that the auto industry is having the worst year in its history, but I can't lose any sleep over Detroit's decline. I'm too busy standing in my third line today here in a Lucky Toad supermarket buying another pack of gum so I'll have enough change for the parking meters. And when I'm not standing in line like some poor Russian, I'm standing in front of a pole in my neighborhood trying to catch up with the latest parking regulations. They put one up this morning that says, head in subcompact parking only between 6 a.m. and low tide, except for street cleaning Tuesdays. And the one under it read, cars displaying permit B on alternate days will be towed. Oh, good. She's given me three quarters in change. <laughs> That'll buy me 12 minutes. Gee, that ought to be enough time to stand in line for more change. This is Hal Stark, prisoner of the 20th century. Oh, hi. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. This is the world of the fire zine for sophisticated intellectuals like me. So why don't you just have a virtual martini like me? Uh, we want a virtual olive or a virtual onion. That's a gimlet, you know. <laughs> and uh, just browse around. 
you, you know, you can't tear anything, you can't soil anything, and there are really no books on sale. It's all just virtual. So have a virtually wonderful time. Oh, another little teeny, teeny, teeny? You betcha. Hi, this is Phil Proctor, and although we don't have the power to declare war, we can declare that we have a new Fireside Theater album out there that will make you laugh yourself into oblivion before the year Y2K. It's called Give Me Immortality or Give Me Death on Rhino Records. So look for the big uh, steel-plated animal, and right underneath his uh, back hoof, you'll find our new CD. Hey, man, if you're listening to this show, like, uh, you're into the blues. And so here's a little piece from uh, Christine Beatty, Northwestern University School of Music. She's, uh, she studied the blues. She knows what it's all about. She knows where it's really at. How to sing the blues. Most blues begin, woke up this morning. I got a good woman is a bad way to begin the blues unless you stick something nasty in the next line like, I got a good woman with the meanest dog in town. Blues is simple. After you have the first line right, repeat it. Then find something that rhymes, well, sort of. Like, uh, got a good woman with the meanest dog in town. He got teeth like Margaret Thatcher and he weighs about 500 pounds. The blues are not about limitless choice. Blue cars are Chevys and Cadillacs. Other acceptable blues transportation is Greyhound bus or a southbound train. Walking plays a major part in the blues. So does fixin' to die. Teenagers can't sing the blues. Adults sing the blues. Blues adulthood means old enough to get the electric chair if you shoot a man in Memphis. You can have the blues in New York City, but not in Brooklyn or Queens. Hard times in Vermont or North Dakota are just a depression. Chicago, St. Louis, and Kansas City are still the best places to have the blues. The following colors do not belong in the blues. Violet, beige, and mauve. You can't have the blues in an office or a shopping mall. The lighting is wrong. Good places for the blues are the highway, the jailhouse, or an empty bed. Bad places are ashrams, gallery openings, or a weekend in the Hamptons. No one will believe it's the blues if you wear a suit, unless you happen to be an old black man. Do you have the right to sing the blues? Yes, if your first name is a southern state, like Georgia, or you're blind, or you shot a man in Memphis, or, like me, you can't be satisfied. No, you do not have a right to sing the blues if you were once blind but now can see, you're deaf, <laughs> or you have a trust fund. Neither Julio Iglesias nor Barbara Streisand can sing the blues. You dig? If you ask for water and your baby gives you gasoline, <laughs> man, that's the blues. Other blues beverages are wine, Irish whiskey, and muddy water. Blues beverages are not any mixed drink, any wine, kosher for Passover, or Yoo-Hoo, all flavors. If it occurs in a cheap motel or a shotgun shack, it's blues death. Stabbed in the back by a jealous lover is a blues way to die. So is the electric chair. Substance abuse or being denied treatment in an emergency room, that is not a blues death. It is also not a blues death if you die during a liposuction treatment. That sucks. Some blues names for women. Sadie. Big Mama. Bessie. Some blues names for men. Joe. Willie. Little Willie. Lightning. 
persons with names like Sierra or Sequoia will not be permitted to sing the blues, no matter how many men they shoot in Memphis, okay? Other blues names, you could mix and match these if you'd like. Well, let's start with the name of a physical infirmity. Blind, cripple, asthmatic. First name, well, remember those names I gave you? Or you could use the name of a fruit. Lemon, lime, kiwi. Blind, kiwi, melon, Jackson. That's good. Oh, yeah. Use the last name of a president. Jefferson, Johnson, Fillmore. You know, fill out the blanks. That's all you need to know. So, sing the blues. in the city of the future. <laughs> Hi, your friends. Ralph Sportsport here to tell you that everybody must die, but you don't have to be there when it happens. That's why we're having our great going on a body sale. That's right. You can live forever while your friends fall apart around you like rotten fruit. And here's how. Lease a body or a limb from our headless body farm. It's made by Americans from Americans. And if you act now and don't be a clone, you can enter the nude century with your choice of these marvelous mutations. Nap velour designer jeans, deluxe follicle hair, mat crafting with updated media sensitive stimulated rapid filler, real road, non-glossy carbon sense by glue guards, power moons, and tinted tit grill spoilers. Beautifully air-conditioned sneeze through wind vents and our beautifully air-conditioned air from our beautifully air-conditioned factory. So come on down to Ralph's Boss Sports New and Used Body Shop here in the city of <laughs> Emphysema and do it today because there may not be a tomorrow. Hello, this is Nino the Mind Boggler. And, you know, you only think that you're at this website, but you're not. You're in a box like me, a, a box of your mind, a, a box of society, a box of, of the government. And you'll never get out. So you, you're just deceiving yourself. So, so anyway, enjoy. Look around. It's all for you. It's all free, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> until we catch up with you. This is Nino, and... I, I, I know what you're thinking. No, no, don't do that. No, no, no. No, you have to pay for pornography. This is free. Enjoy. At this time, we are proudly required to present our community spokesman for the religion of your choice. And now, Rear Reverend Sport Trendleberg will give up this day. Good morning. Good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> my, 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 how difficult it is to know what time it is when you're locked in an empty studio with artificial lights. But don't worry, because he doesn't know what time it is either, and he's got the stopwatch. Let me scare you with a little story. A cheese Danish with nuts underwent a Swedish operation and became a nun. Well, every day, she, he would go for a swim in the same crowded high-speed drainage canal outside of the monastery. And then one day, forgetting to kick her habit, she was dragged down by the heavy black garments and drowned only to be found by a fisherman of a different face. Faith, who happened by. He was a common man, and when he asked his god or devil why this had not happened to him, he got no reply. And so, he took her shoes and walked away, preferring not to get 
in Paul. <laughs> what then are we afraid of? Fear, like pain, may just be his way of hurting us. Hmm? <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. And good night.